Anastasia Palaget has resigned as Premier of Queensland. She was quite emotional as she announced her resignation effective next Friday. Thank you to my cabinet and my staff. Thank you to the Labor Party, to all of our frontline workers, but most of all, thank you to every single Queensland. Sorry. It's been the greatest on my life and our best days are well and truly ahead of us. Who's more upset, Joe, Queenslanders or Anastasia <laughs> Palaszczuk? <laughs> well, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I, I think Anastasia Palaszczuk is a genuinely nice person. And let's not forget, this is the woman who took the Labor Party in Queensland from a kitchen table. Like, literally, that whole caucus could have sat around a kitchen table after Campbell Newman just absolutely Seven, eight them. seats. That's left. right. And, they, and she completely turned it around. So her sort of, I, I suppose, unassuming style of, you know, the just, you know, the, the mum next door or the, the ordinary Australian battler sort of thing that she does very well, I don't know how much of it is put on and how much of it is real, really resonated, clearly. Having said all that, um, I think, like everyone on this panel, I had some serious problems with the way she handled COVID. Mm. Interestingly, she was one of the courageous few premiers who initially said schools were safe and they were going to stay open, and then the Queensland <laughs> Teachers Union had a bit of a stop work <laughs> meeting and suddenly schools weren't safe. So, uh, great work to those. Um, the interesting thing I find about this, and if you compare it to the, the Daniel Andrews resignation, both Queensland and Victoria are actually run by the left. And unlike Andrews, Palaszczuk is technically a member of the right, but the left have all the numbers. So she didn't have the numbers in her caucus to continue if the left ever decided they wanted to put Stephen Miles in or the other one who might be putting their, uh, her hand up. And, um, and she, didn't have, she no longer had the antidote to not having support in the caucus room, which has been hugely popular with the public. That has just completely nosed But, but Joe, Joe, look at the, the, look at the entire state. Uh, the latest survey I saw was the LNP had 53% mm. against 47% for Labor. The, the, the problem was she passed her use by date, too many mistakes. Had she might have started out as an ordinary person, but she became a fairly haughty uh, mm. red carpet person. Yeah, well, that's well right. beyond the ordinary person, <laughs> yeah. she'd lost their hearts, she'd yeah. lost their minds, and uh, this, this came up in August. And in August we were told... Uh, you know, fairly obviously she's got to go. What yeah. will happen, they said in August, was there'll be a few months. So in a few months, what will happen is uh, we'll let it cool down and then she'll announce her re uh, retirement. Well, here we are in uh, December, exactly three mm -hmm. months later. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and she was told if she does that, she'll go out a Labor hero. What did Albo call her today? A, a Labor, Labor, Labor hero. hero. Yeah. Yeah. But what, but, I mean, I just think goodbye and good riddance, to be honest. Joe, talking about the way she handled COVID mm. was appalling. Yep. The, the ideal quote... Queensland hospitals are for Queenslanders. Mm. That is her legacy. There's a dead that's, baby. That is what that. she leaves behind. Ridiculous commentary like that. She politicised COVID. She made a mockery of families whose loved ones were on the other side of the border. Mm. She trundled herself off to Tokyo, got an exemption for herself in the middle of the pandemic while everyone else was locked down, then let NRL families in during right. the NRL yeah, grand right. final. There were so many double standards during that particular mm. two-year period. Because <laughs> so, Queensland so stadiums no, aren't just for but Queenslanders. Just, as somebody like me, I had family in WA and that at the time yeah. was led by another dictator, Mark McGowan, and I was pro-families at the time and that is what I remember of her legacy. And yet here's the paradox, right? She was all of that and yet Queenslanders kept voting for her. Yeah, they loved her. And again, I think it was that kind of girl next door vibe she put out. She didn't come across as too haughty. She didn't come across as too pretentious. She didn't talk down to them. She came across as one of them. And again, I don't know well enough to know how much of that was real or how much of that was an act because it resonated really well in focus groups. But um, but yeah, clearly I think the ball... Well, I mean, she wasn't even trying in the last year or so. Like, she was going on the yeah. overseas trips. She knew that the yeah. red carpets were hurting her. She kept going on them. Maybe she's just young and in love and that's what she wanted to do. That's great. But she clearly had, had given up a long time ago 